I wanted to make a quick video about biodigester designs um, and how I think you can improve. Uh, I, I, I want to talk about what I think is the best biodigester to design and what I think is the most common biodigester design. I think the most common one has a couple of flaws that can be pretty easily remedied. Now, uh, there's three uh, places, three, three interfaces that are going to be involved in every biodigester. And uh, the first one is where you put your substrate in. The second one is where the fertilizer comes out, the used up material. And the third one is where your methane comes out. Uh, I think every digester is going to have at least those. So uh, here, I'll, I built this cool cell phone tower, and I'm going to draw. I'll start with uh, Solar Cities design first. And so the way their digester works, and uh, Solar City has an outstanding video that's uh, kind of animated and shows you how to build one of these. And I think it's a great video. It's a uh, really good introduction to biodigestion. If you haven't seen it or you don't know what it is, you should go watch it. But So what they suggest doing is cutting three holes in the top of an IBC tank. You drop PVC pipe. Oh, that's crooked. Um, you drop PVC in all three holes. And then you... Uh, before you do that, you cut holes in the PVC. So the first one, you cut a hole in the bottom of the side of the PVC. The second one, you cut a hole in the top. And the third one, you cut a hole somewhere near the middle. And now the one with the hole in the bottom is going to be your substrate in. You put a funnel on top of that. That's where you're going to pour your stuff. Uh, this one is where the gas is going to come out. So you put a cap with a fitting on there, and then you go to a hose out to your uh, inner tube. And the last one is where your substrate's going to come out, uh, your used up material. So you chop this off, make it shorter. You have to make this shorter, and then you put a, uh, a T on here. So the T looks like this with the 90 coming out this way. And the T is for a vacuum break so that you don't accidentally siphon out your entire tank. And now from the T coming off, you uh, put another 90 on there. And here is where you hang a bucket. So now when you pour, now the problem with this design is um, your fluid, your liquid level is going to be right here. This is the point of no return. If the fluid level gets higher than that, it pours out. So your fluid is always going to be here, which is a problem because you've got just a tiny amount of surface area giving you gas. And all of this is creating gas, which is creating pressure, which is gonna do all kinds of weird stuff here and here. It's gonna push, it's gonna push, uh, product out or, or your slurry out it's gonna it's gonna push uh, slurry up into this hose and make a mess I it's gonna cause all kinds of weird problems um, you're gonna have issues like this it's not gonna work as smooth as it could so what I think is a better design is we'll draw this out real quick um, you still need three holes, but this one's going to go in the side. And I'll draw this two different ways that you could build it. So this is the same. You got your funnel. Uh, I would suggest putting a valve here if you have access to it. And then this one, uh, you could draw that. You could do this like Solar City does and put a hole near the top on the inside so that uh, your gas is coming from the top and then put a, a fitting here with a hose out to your inner tube, or you could just drill a hole in the top of your vessel and put a fitting in it with a, I would put a valve on that also and a hose coming out. 
So it doesn't have to be a PVC. You don't have to, because PVC is expensive, and uh, you don't need that uniseal either. You can just pop a fitting in there. And now, uh, this is the main difference and where I think you can seriously improve on Solar City's design is you can, uh, and this is what I did, my PVC comes in 90s, so I'm still getting uh, the, the fluid, I'm still getting material from the middle of the, uh, of the container. And then out here at 90s like this, uh, there's a T here for a vacuum break, and then at 90s, and this is where I hang my bucket. So now, uh, another way I'm going to draw this, you can put your, your, uh, your hole in the middle instead of the top if you want to, and you can push your PVC in here. This will be a little bit easier. And then have a 90 here. Put your T on here for a vacuum break. And then an, uh, another 90. And you hang a bucket there. So either with either one of these, this is the point of no return now, is over here. So your fluid level is going to be there. And over here it's going to be here. So you want, this is maybe a little high, you want this a little lower, but that way you have all this surface area is all gas and it, it's, uh, I think it's going to work a lot smoother. Um, now the only way I think you could improve, mine isn't this way, but the way I think you could improve on this design is to tilt the whole thing. If you were to tilt the thing and have something... I don't know what this would look like now. I think your 90 would be down here in your bucket. But you'd have more, more fluid in here and more surface area. But you'd have to build some kind of cradle to hold it at a tilted angle. So I haven't done that. It's just something that I've seen pictures of. So, we'll go look at mine. We can go look at mine uh, and I'll show you what that looks like in real life. Uh, and then take a quick look at my filters. But here's mine, and I've showed it several times on this channel before. But this is uh, this is my Uniseal on the side, and like I said, I'd suggest putting valves on everything. I got a valve on my funnel too, and a Uniseal there. So my fluid level is here. Uh, if it gets any higher than there, it's going to run out, but it's here, and I've got all this surface area uh, is gassing off. So that's a, that's a suggestion on how you can build that. And now um, I think Brandy, I think Brandy was a, a commented asking to show my all of my filters. So here's the first one real quick uh, that is my water bubbler and I have a video going into detail about water bubblers um, my next one I haven't talked about but that's a charcoal filter and they actually sell those for this filter pot for the filter body and uh, the internet told me that charcoal filters were good for CO2, um, so I bought one. Uh, <laughs> they're also very cheap, so if that works, uh, I'll be pretty excited about that. I haven't determined yet if that's actually useful or not. Uh, my last one is a Molsiv filter, and I have another video, my video on desiccant filters, going into detail about uh, Molsiv and my last filter, which is uh, silica beads, another desiccant filter. So this second desiccant filter is specifically, uh, just to change colors. If it gets any moisture to let me know that the mulsive is used up. So those are my filters. And that is, I think a superior design for a biodigester.